this is a special and an important and urgent message for my dear brothers and sisters of Bangladesh. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate you that hardly two days ago, today is the 7th of August, two days ago on Monday, the 5th of August, you got freedom from an unjust regime. And I'd given a message more than two weeks ago on the 20th of July, when I started receiving messages on my social media and the Bangladesh around me started speaking about it. And as you may be aware that on my social media, the maximum following I have is from Bangladesh. On my Facebook alone, out of 23.9 million followers, more than 25%, more than 6 million followers are from Bangladesh alone. It has the largest following in any country in the world. It has more following than India and Pakistan put together. In India, I have about 3 million followers. In Pakistan, I have 3 million followers. But Bangladesh alone has more than 6 million followers. That's the reason it becomes my moral duty and also an Islamic duty to give a suggestion and advice to my dear brothers and sisters of Bangladesh. On the 20th of July, more than two weeks ago, when dozens of students had been killed in the protest that was started by the students against the unjust 30% quota reservation. And I appreciated the efforts of the students and I told them that dozens of students had been killed and inshallah they are martyrs, they are shaheed and Allah will give them Janet of I also give advice to the officials of Bangladesh that they should let justice prevail, let peace prevail and they should handle the situation with wisdom and with hikmah. But unfortunately, the officials of Bangladesh did not heed my advice and they retaliated and they increased the atrocities against the students. So much so that on Sunday alone, on the 4th of August, more than 100 people were killed by the unjust regime just three days ago. And the total officially had reached to more than 300 people had been killed. And the unofficial report said more than 1,000. Some reports said thousands had been killed. And because of this, the protests intensified. And on the 5th of August, two days ago, hundreds of thousands of Bangladeshi, they marched in Dhaka and they went to the residence of the previous Prime Minister Hasina. So much so that the previous Prime Minister, who was a dictator, Hasina, had to resign and flee the country. And Allah gave victory to the students and the peaceful protesters. And I would like to remind here that even after the freedom was achieved, yet we are receiving news that there is arson, there is vandalism, that the houses and the shops of the supporters of Hasina are being torched, they are being looted. And today morning, and even yesterday, I received information that some of the Hindus have been attacked. I also received information that a temple was attacked. I am not aware how many Hindus have been attacked, but my request to my dear brothers and sisters, the Muslim brothers and sisters of Bangladesh, please do not attack any Hindu. Do not attack a single non-Muslim. Do not burn the houses of the Hindus or the non-Muslims. Please do not attack a single temple. Do not burn or attack any non-Muslim places of worship. We as Muslims, we should be an example to the world. And let not any Muslim misguide you that attacking a Hindu is good, or attacking a non-Muslim is good, attacking a place of worship is good. Please don't let any Muslim misguide you. And regarding the conditions, what should be done, whether attacking a place of worship is permitted or not, I've given a detailed answer on my video on Hagia Sophia. And there I've said that when there is a war, where a Muslim army goes and there is a war and when there is a jihad, and at that time, depends upon the leader to make a decision. If that place of non-Muslim worship is creating a fitna, is misguiding the Muslims, then if they destroy it, it's permitted. But generally, we have seen many occasions where the Khulfa Rashidin, where Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he told the Sahabas that don't attack the place of worship. It depends upon the situation. On the other extreme, if a non-Muslim has taken protection in a Muslim leadership or a Muslim regime, it becomes the duty of the Muslim leader and the Muslims 
to protect the lives of the non-Muslims. Not only protect the life, even protect the property. Today in Bangladesh, we don't have either of the situation. We don't have a war taking place. Neither do we have a non-Muslim taking protection in the Muslim regime. But my advice to my dear Muslim brothers and sisters of Bangladesh, my advice to you in this situation is see to it that you do not attack a single Hindu, a single non-Muslim. Do not burn the house of a single Hindu or a single non-Muslim. See to it you do not attack a single temple. See to it you do not burn a single temple. Do not attack or burn any non-Muslim place of worship. In fact, see to it that you protect the non-Muslims. You protect the places of worship of the non-Muslims. I request the students of Bangladesh and the Muslims of Bangladesh, please don't take law in your hand. If you find that there's any person doing injustice, if you find any non-Muslim doing injustice, see to it that let peace prevail in the country first and later on, you can take them to the laws and authorities and see to it that they are brought to justice. But now, at this moment, Please stop vandalizing, please stop attacking and destroying the properties of the people. In Islam, we have to protect our neighbors, irrespective of they are Muslim or non-Muslim. See to it that all the Muslims in Bangladesh, if you find any non-Muslim, any Hindu living in your locality, see to it that they are secure. If anyone goes and attacks them, you should protect them. I would like to request the student's body who started this wonderful movement against the unjust quota that was launched by the government, which also went to the extent of toppling the unjust regime. My request to you is see to it that you form another subcommittee in your student's body that sees to it that they place some students outside the temples, outside the non-Muslim places of worship. See to it that if anyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, tries to attack these places of worship, see to it that they should protect. Let the world come to know that this is how the Muslims behave. Like how at the time of Ful Farashidin, at the time of Hazrat Umar, the non-Muslims were so happy and so peaceful. They wanted to live under the leadership of an Islamic ruler. See to it that you are examples. Please don't let someone misguide you. And Allah has helped you now. I would like to congratulate the students, the youth of Bangladesh, that because of you, now there is freedom for all the Bangladeshis against the unjust previous regime, against the previous dictator, Prime Minister Hasina. Allah has helped you, but let me remind you, what you have got is only victory in the first stage of the battle, that the previous regime has been toppled. But now your real battle starts. See to it that peace is restored in Bangladesh. See to it that Bangladesh has a just regime. See to it that you follow the Quran and say Hadith. You follow the teachings of Allah and the beloved Prophet. See to it that you are good exemplary Muslims, not only to the people of Bangladesh, but even the people of the world. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may the problems of Bangladesh be solved. May the problem of unemployment may be solved. May the economy be restored. May the justice be restored. May the peace be restored. And I have high hopes that the students have started this movement. Please don't let it die in between. You have just won the first stage of the battle. See to it that the peace is restored. See to it no non-Muslim, no Hindus attack. See to it that you protect the houses and the places of worship of the Hindus. And since the last three weeks, since we came to know that this problem has started in Bangladesh, my son, who usually often leads the Salah in the mosque where we pray, where we are praying for months together, five times a day, we are reading the Qunut in every Salah and praying for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Since the last three weeks, my son has even started including Bangladesh and the people of Bangladesh in the prayers. And inshallah, peace will be restored. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps all my brothers and sisters in Bangladesh. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you.